Hawk. Can you hear me? Might still be there. Hi, yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. All righty. All right, so you guys are good to go. I'm going to black out your screen. Your sound sounds good. Okay. I'm going to black out your screen so that you guys can just go about your day and do your normal thing. And then I will prompt you, like I always do, to start video again. And once it's up and running, I'll have, I'll unmute um, Tara and then we should be good to go. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. I'll see you You're guys in about eight minutes. <laughs> All right. So. Bye.
Good thing I don't go anywhere. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Hello, boys and girls and families. How are you? I miss everybody very, very much and hoping all is well. Today, we are going to have fun with nature art. I've collected some wonderful, fun, easy, special things for you to have fun with today and for the days ahead. So this is called nature art because I took a nature walk and I took a walk with my family that's in my home now. And I collected very, very special pieces of plants and flowers. And these plants and flowers are called perennials, which means the plants come back. You might be hearing my dog in the background. Um, so these are perennials. And if you look here, I have placed pieces of plant on paper, and I'm going to show you how this works. Now, again, these are all perennials, which means that they come back year after year after year. I didn't plant any of these this year. I just went outside, and these are all the types of colors of plants that are growing right now. And I'm going to show you how we start. So over here, I have some yellows and greens and pinks and watch what i do it is magical art this is called the dandelion and you take the dandelion and you rub it on the paper i just picked these this morning and i always make sure that when i'm picking a plant i'm with my family and that there's more than one. So I went around my yard at, and at the end of my driveway with, my, with an adult, with my family, and I made sure that there was more than one dandelion. So I picked where there's two and I rubbed it. Now here is an azalea, an English azalea. And I take it and I rub the azalea <laughs> That's my dog. So you can show the dog. So this is the azalea. Over here, I have some bluebells. And I just rub it on the paper. And the colors appear like magic. Here's yellow from a different plant. These are called marsh marigolds. Now I happen to know all the plants' names because I've been studying plants for many, many years, but it's okay if you don't know the names. You take your plant and you just rub it on the paper. And this is a leaf from a daffodil. And I'm just pressing with my fingers onto the paper. Over here, this is the a dandelion leaf. And you just take it and you actually can try and draw with it. You use pinch your fingers, you take the leaf and you press hard and squeeze it. And what's making the colors come through is just like humans, just like we need water to drink, there's still water in the stems and the petals. So the water inside the yellow helps it come onto a paper. And if you notice, you can draw thick lines or thin lines. This is a violet. You can take it and make squiggle lines over there. And now what's fun to do is this is moss mixed in with some grass and dirt. And you can have a lot of fun drawing. How about I make a letter? I'm just pressing hard, holding down the paper. The letter A I made with dirt. And here's some clover. Let's see what the clover is going to look like. I'll do it on this piece of paper. And you get shades of color. Shades means different colors of the green. We also can call it a hue. A hue is a color. And nature has beautiful hues. 
This is something called grape hyacinth. And I'm just going to take my pinch of fingers and push down. And this is a very light lavender, a light purple, a hue of purple. And if you move over here, this is forsythia. And there's a lot of forsythia growing on Long Island. So this is another shade. Let's find out what color forsythia looks like. Again, I'm just pressing slowly and hard. Wow, look at that. And over here, I have a piece of a daffodil. Now I have many, many daffodils growing around the property here. But again, if you take a nature walk with your family, you can find grasses and leaves to try and do this at home. This is the daffodil color. And you can have fun pushing down hard and filling the whole paper with it. And then I'm going to add some violet on top of that and create a collage of colors. Let's see what this big leaf is like. So now those are all different colors that I chose. Over here, I have tulips growing. So I took one little petal of a tulip and it's a color, a hue of red. Now what you can do is you can make a collage of colors. So I took all these colors over here. And again, I have many bushes of azalea. Uh, I have many grape highs then. So if you see again, two or three or four of the same plant or flower, you can take a little piece of it because again, it comes back next year. So on the same color sheet, I'm going to make some hues of blues or purples and put yellow around it. Here's some forsythia to run through it. And a violet, Let's see if I can make a circle with a violet coming through and then maybe color some red in there. And the marsh marigold. Again, I know the names of them because I've been studying them like a scientist, but you don't have to know the names. This is more of just an artist fun activity to do. And I'll take a big wide three piece of grass and press hard with it and see what colors come through. Here's that moss again. The moss works well. And put some green over here. And while you go traveling outside, you can collect the plants and put them in a bag, a baggie um, so that the moisture stays inside till you're going to use it. So this is nature art. Now I want to show you a different way to create art from wonderful nature. In this container, I went outside and collected sticks, leaves, branches, rocks, bark, acorn. And what's fun to do is to make nature prints with these. So I just took some paint and I'm going to start off with a rock and dip it in. And this is called rock painting. And I'm going to use a branch of an evergreen and stick it in the paint, pushing down gently making sure you get it in with all the sides and push down and pick up. And you can dip in the paint again and push down and pick it up. Over here, I have bark. Now I didn't take bark off a tree, 
the bark is what keeps trees alive. And inside the bark, it holds water for the tree. But I did find this on the ground. So I'm going to dip it in yellow. And the bark makes interesting patterns and rubbings. Let's try an acorn. Now, if you don't have paint at home, you can use food coloring. So I used some food coloring for this. And let's see the print. All different shapes. And you can have fun going on a nature hunt, collecting really interesting things that you find on the ground. This is a branch that I just happened to find on the ground. Let's see how that works. And what's fun about doing nature art is you never know exactly how your work is gonna come out. That's what makes it so special. So you can take this big piece and push it down. and pick it up and you can see some of the leaf rubbing, the branch rubbing. And I have a fun, just a, a stick I found. Some sticks are thin, some sticks are fat. And you can have fun drawing. Use sticks as a paintbrush and make squiggly lines. Oh, and look at that, it's mixing. So you can have fun experimenting and dipping in all different colors and using a fat stick. And now I'm going to use a thinner stick and have fun designing with a thin stick. You can use it like a pencil making the letter T. The food coloring works well with sticks. Letter M. Let's do another letter. How about S for spring? I'm going to fit an S in here. S for spring. And you can find leaves on the ground. And stick this in, the food coloring. It also makes a fun sound. And just push down on it and lift up. And there you have a nature collage of things that I picked off the ground and plants. Now, when you're finished with all this beautiful artwork, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. So right when you're done, go to a sink and have mom or dad or family help you wash your hands very thoroughly. Okay, I want to show you what's been happening since we first did our planting a few weeks ago. Very excited. So let's start with this. This is the seeds in a baggie. And look what's happened. The string beans have actually grown up and out of the bag. And this is very interesting here because this was the original seed and it's actually growing along with the string bean. And you can see the roots are coming down and longer. And again, just keeping this wet and hanging it on your window. Over here, this was the marigolds and string beans in the tomato container, the cherry tomato container. So it's recycled into a planter. Look how they've grown. Maybe soon we'll start to get string beans. This was the seeds in an 
a carton. And they, I just water them a little bit every day, keeping it moist. And they are just growing and growing through the days and weeks ahead. Now, what you can start to do is in about three to five days, you can transplant these into a planter, into a bigger pot. Or you can go outside and find a su sunny space and you can gently lift them out. And I will show you how to do that now. So let's start with this string bean. And I'm going to use a stick. You can use a stick or a spoon and very, very gently, if you wanna do one at a time, you can pull it out if you wanna do one at a time and dig a little hole in the ground and stick it into the ground. And make sure you have to check on it that it is moist. You wanna make sure you keep this wet. And as I mentioned before to everybody, if you don't want to dig them up, you can take this and just dig a hole a little bit bigger than the size of the egg carton and gently drop this in, water it, and watch what happens. These are the carrots that I just immersed in water and they have sprouted into the water, their roots are growing, and the carrot tops are starting to really grow very tall. And just making sure that it's watered. When we did our rainbow session, I talked about capillary action. This was the celery that I just added blue food coloring. And magically, capillary tubes are lifting the water up into the stem and out to the leaves. I didn't dip this again. I haven't taken this out. I just made sure that this stayed wet. And magically, you can tell where the water's reaching in a plant because the outer leaves are turning blue. So that means water's getting sucked, sucked up through the stem and out to the leaves. And I like to just leave it here because the colors are very bright. It reminds me of spring. This is our grass head. And my oh my, has it grown with grass. And I thought it would be fun to show you how we take care of this. If you want to, you can cut the grass from the grass head and give it a little trim. So. You take it out of its container, take a scissor, and you gently cut around the face. A lot of fun to do. And the really amazing thing about starting a grass head at home is it just keeps growing. And I'm just gently cutting around it. And you can do this with somebody at home to help you. And I like to cut it so where I can see the face again. Cut a little bit down here. And there you have our grass head that we started together a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to leave the top. I actually cut the pantyhose around the top so that the grass could continue growing and growing upward. And making sure this is wet, you can submerge. That means you can put this whole thing in water and hold it up and let the water drip through and then put it in a sunny spot. So that's our grass head. Now, I hope you enjoyed 
watching me create nature art. And again, always go with someone in your family, an adult, to go outside. You can go for a walk with somebody in your home and you can create beautiful artwork. Even if you get different sizes of grasses, it's interesting to see what happens. Now I have our special friend, Candy's cousin. He says hello. And let's see if Candy's going to eat. Let's see if he's hungry today. <gasps> Here he goes. <gasps> Candy's cousin ate. Hooray! He says hello. And I hope you will join me again for our next lesson. This is so fun, easy, and something really exciting to do when spring approaches. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.